Well, welcome, welcome, beautiful ladies. I just wanted to thank you for joining me as we have Michaela here to share her beautiful story. Um, Michaela is going to be sharing with us today how changing her food and her attitude towards food and exercise has truly helped her with the stage of menopause and how gratitude has made a huge impact on her life and her self-growth and finding her purpose and continuing to invest in herself has been life-changing. Michaela was born and raised in Australia and you're gonna love her accent, I do. Uh, <laughs> she's a high school teacher by training and she got married very young and moved to the other side of the world, brave soul that she is. Um, she's the mother of 23 year old triplets God bless her soul. Um, <laughs> she wrote a book um, when her kids were young, around four years old. Yeah. She had to put it down because she didn't have the time to pursue it, which is rightfully so when you've got three little toddlers running around. I can't imagine she had time to brush her teeth, never mind anything else. Um, so after being a stay-at-home mom for 14 years, she had kind of lost part of herself and she needed to do something that was for her. So she got her book self-published, good on her. So that's a huge accomplishment. And you can find her book, um, Three Times of the Fun on Amazon. So go check, take a look. I definitely want to order it because it looks very fun. Like her reviews on this book are um, amazing. So I'm going to get it just, just for the kicks. <laughs> and so you should too, okay? <laughs> um, and then she started her health and wellness business and understanding the importance of what we put on our bodies is just as important as we, what we put into our bodies. Our skin being the lar largest organ that we have, I can understand and I'm excited to hear how this transformation has happened for Michaela um, as she was going through menopause and her understanding how important all of this was. So without wasting any more time, I'm going to give Michaela the floor to share her journey of her health and wellness journey and how all of this has come to play for her. Thank so. you. Well, thank you so much for having me, Stacey. It's a pleasure. And I just wanted to say with my book, in regards to my book, when people go on, on Amazon, if they have to search for three times the fun by Michaela Lincoln, because if you just put in three times the fun, you're going to get bare chested men come up. <laughs> oh, dear. That's not the fun I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, that was so, good. That that clear because when it first came out on Amazon, I had a friend in Australia say, I don't think this is your book. <laughs> so it is a children's book. So, anyway, that's just a little side note. So, good my story, time. as you said, um, yes, I'm born and raised in Australia. Um, I've got a sister there. I've got friends there. And I got married. I met my husband at 21. At 23, I moved. And in those days, I really, it really was the other side of the world. There was no Facebook. There was no FaceTime. There was no, no Skype. And it really was very expensive, limited phone calls. So it was very hard for me in the beginning because I really didn't know anybody. Fast forward 30 years. Yes, I've been married for 30 years. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and unfortunately, I have been unable to get back to visit my sister. I have a sister in Australia and a sister in Paris. We're very spread out and COVID has kind of cramped our travel plans to see each other. But now I say thank goodness for modern technology because WhatsApp and FaceTime really have kept us going. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to um, fast forward a lot with my story and just jump in and ask me questions to don't if, if I'm missing something out, but if we're talking about menopause, I just want to um, preface this by saying that what we put on our bodies and what we put in our bodies is so important. And what happens is when you hit menopause, those years and years of inflammation build up. So when you're 20 years old and you're just piling away the junk food and just putting on products just because, hey, they cost nothing or my friend recommended them. All that builds up over time. And once you hit menopause, that inflammation really hits you big time. That's when we really notice the changes and when we're, all our hormones are going wacky and the estrogen levels are declining. That's when we really notice. So what happened with me was um, my journey into health and wellness, it wasn't something at first I was looking for. 
when I, when I went wanted to work again, I, I taught briefly as a high school teacher when I first moved here. I even had my own cookie business at one point because I love to bake and I love to cook. And then I don't regret being a stay-at-home mom. I'm, I'm just so grateful I had that opportunity because my husband traveled all the time. And having three kids at once, I know you'll laugh, but it's like having one child because everything happens at the same time. So I wanted to be home for everything. And I was there for every school play, excuse me, every soccer game, uh, every hockey game in the middle of the winter that I would let my kids do because my husband would be away. And every first step, which you never get back, right? But right. after 14 years, like you said, I really lost my sense of direction and sense of self. So I was looking to do something, but I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. And um, Arbonne kind of found me. I didn't find it. So that's my health and wellness business. And at first, it wasn't something that, oh, health and wellness, okay. I didn't really have any major reason to do health and wellness, but I did it more for the business point of view and because I, I did love the products. My, my, shortly after I started my business, two months in, my father was diagnosed with a stage four brain tumor, a glioblastoma, and they really only come in one stage, unfortunately. And it was 14 weeks from when we found out to when he passed away. Wow. And yeah, it was very fast. I don't ever remember my dad sick a day in his life. And I think for me, that kind of started the importance of wellness because I really believe it was stuff in the air that we breathe. I mean, we also had infertility problems. I believe it was the crap in the air that we breathed because they could never pinpoint exactly what it was. So, um, well, they kind of did, but they didn't know what caused it. So I believe that it's not just what we're eating that we should be really aware of. But like you said, our skin's our largest organs. Things are absorbed very quickly into our bloodstream. And I think now's the time to become our own health advocate and start understanding what it is that we're actually putting on our body. So it's like going to the supermarket and reading about, um, oh, look, all this sugar, all this fat. Now we should also be reading, what the hell is this? What, why does it end in a BEN? It's a paraben. Parabens are toxins. Our bodies don't produce parabens, but they're finding them in breast cancer cells. So mm. I think that with my father kind of was like, whoa, okay. So now I've really got to change what I'm doing with myself. So um, I built my business and I was very lucky that I had built it quickly and I was able to take four months off and be with my father every single day um, and still make money. So that was a huge bonus for me. Um, I also lost my mum three years after my dad, uh, which also quite suddenly, and it, I'm sure it was from a broken heart. That's what we say. Aww. So it's been a lot of up and downs for me. What's really changed for me is with my business, there comes a lot of personal growth. And when I first started my business, they said, oh, yeah, you do a lot of personal growth. And I was thinking inside, I would smile and say, okay. But inside, I'm like, well, I'm Australian. We don't believe in self-growth, really. So I don't need it. I'm fine as I am. <laughs> now, when I look back eight years from, from now, I'm like, wow, have I changed? So I do, I think gratitude is huge, especially now. Mm. Gratitude is huge. And and it's not the big things, it's the little things. So waking up and going, wow, this sunrise, when I walk in the morning with my dog, it's spectacular. You know, waking up to food on my table and a beautiful, a clean sheets and a beautiful house. Like these are the things that if you're grateful for the little things, you appreciate everything else so much more. So I've done a lot of reading. I do a lot of podcast listening when I walk with my dog and all that really has helped me get through losing my father, losing my mother. And, and otherwise I'd still be on the floor. I think if I didn't have all these tools to get me through. Um, so a couple of years ago, I went through menopause and um, there was no big hurrah. It was my period finished and that was it. Never got it again. And it was very, okay, that's it. But I developed severe menopausal anxiety and I didn't even know that it was such a thing. I didn't know that menopause and anxiety actually existed together. I had no idea what, what it was. I went to the hospital thinking I was having a heart attack, knowing logically I wasn't, but I was very anxious. My heart was beating very, very fast. I was shaking. I couldn't stop. And I was actually talking last night to my kids and I was saying, I actually, that wasn't the first time. I can actually trace it three years ago when I went back to Australia. I remember being on the plane, being short of breath 
And when I was in Australia, I remember having dinner with friends of ours and he was a doctor and I said, you know, I'm so short of breath. I don't know what it is. He goes, okay, go to the hospital. Let's just check you out. You've been traveling. Maybe it's that. So they gave me all kinds of tests. Nothing was wrong. They said it was asthma. Now I am mildly asthmatic, but when I think back now, that was the very first um, symptom of perimenopause, which was anxiety. Uh, two years ago, when I had this menopausal anxiety attack and they sent me home with some Ativan and said, it's stress because my sister-in-law had just passed away and a family friend had passed away. It was, it was terrible. So they said, it's stress, take Ativan. I ended up going on hormone replacement therapy because that helped, but I didn't want to be on it. I really didn't want to put that in my body. I wanted to um, try and do this naturally. It, I mean, menopause is gets a bad rap, but menopause is it's part of aging. It's what our bodies are meant to do. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of grateful that I'm going through menopause because it means I'm healthy, I'm well, and my body is functioning properly. Mm -hmm. So I searched and searched and searched and searched for other things to do with menopause. And I had gained a lot of weight. I was exercising like crazy. And I, the doctor said, oh, just eat less, move more. I did. I was working out with a trainer three days a week. And I was doing a lot. Of, I was doing boxing. I was doing a lot of cardio. I was doing a lot of weights. I was doing Pilates. And I was eating All less. Things. <laughs> right. I was doing everything I was meant to eating less, but I kept putting on weight and I was exhausted and I was dragging myself to the gym mm. and I was not happy. I was miserable. I was not sleeping well. Um, I, the hormones helped with the hot flashes, but I was like, you know what? I, I can't, there's gotta be something else that can help me. After a lot of research, I found an incredible program um, by a New Zealand lady. And she was a registered nurse who did a doctorate in women's aging studies. So she knows what it's like to go through menopause. And when I read her website, it's called my, M my transformation. I'm not sure what it is, but if anyone um, wants it, I can definitely give that. And she, it was like, she was talking to me. I'm like, Oh my God. So I emailed her and I started now I'm normally a start Monday morning kind of girl. <laughs> But over the years, I've realized that the list does not have to be done and I don't have to start on a Monday morning. So it was a Friday and I started Saturday. I gobbled up all this information. I was so desperate for it. And what she teaches you is using food, using food to like heal yourself and to deal with your symptoms. And so what I did was after six months, I was able to get off the hormone replacement therapy. So I'm on nothing now but vitamin D and vitamin C. And what she teaches you is, yes, what all those years of what you put on your body, what you put in your body builds up into inflammation. And the inflammation means your liver's working over time. I, I was doing so much exercise. My body was in adrenal fatigue. So you actually put on weight. You don't lose weight. And so what she did was, well, the num and not only that, I found myself getting off coffee for the anxiety. So I hadn't, I think I've had two cups of coffee in the last two years and they've been decaf. I've just <laughs> lost my taste for it now too. I'm a tea person mainly, but I would like my coffee, but I was like, you know, what? while I'm a little anxious, I think I'll just get off it. And I just kind of got off it and coffee. It's, I mean, it has some good properties, but it is acidic. So I, I stick to tea. And um, refined sugars and processed foods are trigger foods for anxiety for me. So I have learned to control my anxiety through food, through meditation, through deep breathing, through watching a ton of romantic, crappy, shitty movies. <laughs> <laughs> Just to take that pressure off. I told my husband no news at 11 at night, although he did for a while. He seems to have started again. So I'm not happy. Um, <laughs> Because, you know, you don't want to feed into the anxiety. So I have to say, before my anxiety was like a 20 out of 10, now it's, it's really down to a two or three. And if I feel my body changing, I now have the tools to use to help it. Food for me is a big tool. So I, my, yes, it was my husband's birthday. So I did have a piece of cake because, you know, you've got to live as well, right? But the majority of the time, I'm off refined sugars and processed foods. And I've learned to replace them with healthier alternatives. So instead of eating refined sugars, I'll eat um, natural sugars or like maple syrup as a substitute or date syrup or, um, you know, fruit and make all kinds of different 
ingredients and recipes, which you know from my group, I also have a group where I do healthy recipes, um, because it satisfies me and I don't crave them anymore. The beginning's always the hardest, but now it's like when I eat it, I see how my body feels and I don't like that feeling. So it's actually a really great indicator for you. So um, I eat a lot of greens because they're so good for you. I'm mainly plant-based and she explains on this program why, the whys, the hows and the buts and all that. And because of that, I'm able to, you know, I have a hot flush at night. I don't have any more during the day. I've lost some weight. Would I like to lose more? Yes, but it's not about that anymore. It's about being healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, I juice in the mornings because, you know, she explains as you get older, your uh, blood vessels constrict. So beets and apples and celery are great for that. Um, and so I've been using food to really help me. So that's been amazing. And now I'm also noticing um, how important the products are of what we're putting into our body. Because if I'm cleaning out my, my body from inside, I also want to make sure that what's going in from the outside is also really healthy. So um, I use products that are vegan certified, that are toxin free, that are free of artificial colors and preservatives. And not only that come now because we've become a certified B Corp, which means um, uh, certified a B Corp really is, um, I'm just trying to explain it because I love it so much. It's it's not easy to get for a company to become a certified B Corp. It means that they have to undergo rigorous testing. And it just means that you're held to higher standards legally when it comes to sustainability, to recycling, sustainably sourced ingredients, fair trade, and so forth. Mm. And now that I'm aware of what I'm eating, I'm also become much more aware of the planet, Mm. which is such a bad thing. And I think what really hit me was during COVID last year when the world shut down, those pictures of India before and after and and Paris, my sister lives in Paris. She was sending me pictures of places we've been to where you couldn't even see the horizon and it's completely clear. So it made me realize we're not just putting junk in our bodies. We're putting junk in the the air, which is also affecting us because we're breathing it in. So it kind of all goes hand in hand. So, um, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And it's awesome. I, I know that food is so powerful, but it's one of the hardest things to stay consistent with. Um, I was hit with stress almost took me out about 12 years ago. And the doctors all told me I was 32 at the time. And the doctors were like, oh, you're pre-menopause, which rightfully I could have been. My estrogen was at the bottom of the bucket. Um, but I was in so much pain. I, the way I'd explain it to my husband or my friends is that I felt like I had aliens running through my body, like from my head all the way down to my toes. I had zero energy. I, we had a two-story house at the time and I would get halfway up the stairs and I'd have to stop and catch my breath because I literally could not get to the top of the stairs. I was miserable. Nobody in and I do not blame them, wanted to be around me. (laughs) I was a horrible, I was in a horrible state. And I was frustrated because when the doctor told me I was pre-menopause, I'm like, man, if I get into full-fledged menopause, someone please shoot me because I couldn't handle, I was at that time crying out like, Lord, just take me home already. Like I just can't handle this pain. It was brutal. So my husband took me to a naturopath and and we did a whole bunch of tests. We were there for about 10 hours and we we did live blood scans and all kinds of things. We realized that my blood was so caked together that it wasn't moving properly through my body. It was putting a ton of stress on my heart, which showed up that I need, I was three points away from needing a pacemaker. So my ticker was really having a tough time and I just in, in the anxieties that came that were paralyzing like to the point where I put some food in my mouth and it would within 20 minutes it would go right through my body like water Mm -hmm. I was showing up as anorexic I was over 200 pounds and so 70 80 pounds heavier than I should have been and I was just like this is ridiculous I was eating like rabbit food how could I show up anorexic this is not a body an anorexic body and so it was just really hard to to process um, but the natural past, like, no, like, yes, it seems bad. The report right now doesn't look good, but we can fix it. 
right. it's going to take time, but we can fix it. And he did it um, by teaching me how to eat. Mm-hmm. And he, he was a huge believer on the blood type diet. So have you heard of that? Like I have. Blood type? And actually for my blood type, vegetarian is best. And I, I don't eat meat anyway. And um, so it works out really well. Eight years ago. So I, yeah, I've, I've read a little bit about it. Are you an A blood type? I'm an A plus. <laughs> Look at you plus this. Yeah, I'm, I'm an A as well. And I did not grow up with fish. And I have an O blood type husband who is a carnivore by heart. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it has been challenging. And he can make a mean juicy steak on the barbecue that I have a really hard time walking away from. But for my blood type, red meat and I we don't we're we're like oil and vinegar we just don't go well together so if I do indulge my I can feel that in my body I can feel it instantly if you get that aches and the the inflammation you can literally feel that inflammation rolling in like the tides it's insane when you when I started my husband told me uh when I started losing weight he said wow the puffiness has gone away I was puffy in my face and I I used to smile and say, oh, my God, I just look so weird. And it was just puffiness. And, and that's what the inflammation is. And I have, friend, I have a friend who um, she has this nerve disease and she, she started this program. I told her to do it. And she was like, mm, okay. Anyway, she said all that pain that she used to feel that she thought was associated with her nerves has gone. And it was all inflammation. Mm-hmm. So it's amazing. And the longer you do it, your body stops craving. The lo- it's true. The longer you get off sugar, refined sugars, your body doesn't crave it anymore. When you get back on it, your body wants it. So it's, it's in, at first, it's hard. It is hard. You might have withdrawals, depends on how much you eat before. But once you start, and what I love is showing people healthier alternatives, because I don't believe in depriving. If someone used to say to me, okay, don't eat carbs. I'm like, well, sorry, I'm going to eat my carbs. We should be eating carbs, but healthy carbs, yes. carbs that are going to fuel us, not the white empty processed carbs, right? Mm-hmm. And so showing people, exactly, showing people healthier alternatives makes the transition so much easier. And, and then that goes for everything, showing people a healthier alternative to creams they're using and things that put it, anything that goes into your body through your mouth or on your skin. I really think... Um, especially the older we get. I mean, it's always good to start when you're younger to become, you know, look, my daughter is, well, the kids are 23 and she wears makeup and she's been wearing it for a couple of years. She was a little later bloomer, but um, she's going to have years and years of makeup wearing ahead of her. So can you imagine if she's putting the toxins in now, like 30 years from now? I would much or even rather, the ones that start when they're eight and nine and 10 years old. Imagine? So yeah. I would much rather that she uses the Arbonne products that are all completely toxin free and that I know that they're good and I know the philosophy behind them and they're always looking to make them better. Actually, I have something that will astound you. Um, I'm happy that she's using this. In fact, my whole house only uses Arbonne. My, my son, who's not into anything, will only use the shave. He cannot use any other shaving cream anymore. He says, I'm not using it. In Europe, um, there's 1,400 ingredients that they do not put in skincare. And they're, they're seen as the leaders in the industry. Uh-huh. In the U.S., there's less than 25 ingredients that are banned from skincare. So can you imagine the toxins and the junk that's in products that the consumer is so unaware of? Uh And Arbonne voluntarily bans 2,000 ingredients. So yes, and you don't realize this. Years ago when, you know, my esthetician would say, oh, you need a mask, go buy the Clarins. I'd run out and buy it. Why? Because she said, so it had to be good. I didn't care what was in it. Yeah. Now, like I say to her, you need to <laughs> use this one <laughs> because I've become so aware. And, you know, after losing my father and seeing people get sick and, and, and you know, so much is associated to the food as well. I just want to be healthy and live a long life. And, and, and so one of the ways we can do that is exercise and as you age your exercise will change so I no longer do that heavy 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 boxing well I can't anyway I haven't been to the gym in over a year but I just started back 
once a week with the trainer, not three, once a week. Um, I do Pilates once a week or virtually. And then I have these 20 minute videos that she, she has in her program. I do those and I walk every single morning. And she talks about sleep is huge as well. If you're not sleeping when you hit your menopause, you put on weight. So the first thing she deals with is how to get a good night's sleep oh. and how to turn off your melatonin and turn on the serotonin. So I go every single morning for a walk with my dog unless it rains um, with no sunglasses to get that beautiful vitamin C that we need, um, the D, sorry, that we need. Um, yeah. And so there's that, that as well. So between the sleep and the food and the products and everything, I think, and everything rolls into one. And that's in the morning when I listen to a podcast of something positive, because if you start your day in a positive way, it sets the tone for the rest of the day. It really, really does. And so mm -hmm. I've, I'm trying really hard now to put my phone down at nine o'clock at night and not look at my phone until after my walk and my exercise in the morning. And then I will sit, right? So uh, I'll only look at the weather. And yeah. I look at the text just in case one of the kids say, wake me up. But otherwise, I try now to come home, do my thing, and then look. Because, you know, if you, if you open your phone in the morning and, and there's something negative, it's just going to set the tone for the day. But if you feel your, you got to feed your mind as well as your body. And, and your skin. So if you're feeding it with good positive thoughts, and I'm not saying um, ignore the negative, but I've actually weeded, you've got to do gardening. I've weeded out people in my life that are toxic, that drain my energy that I actually don't want to be around anymore. So everything, you know, it's all that. And, and, and once you have your gratitude and your positive and everything that's coming in is, is good and it's, and it's not sucking your energy out and draining you, Mm -hmm. who wants to live that way right it's as you know it's very unpleasant to be constantly oh. surrounded by negativity oh, as it is you. we are now so you have to filter what comes in you really do and that yeah I I tell my husband my husband keeps up with all of it and and I don't any of it so but I tell him I'm like please just give me like 30 second like summary of what it is currently happening right now. So I'm not completely dumbfounded or sideswiped when I'm having conversations with other people, because right. I typically, I, I don't have any of those kinds of things show up on any of my news feeds in my social realm. And I really have no desire to go and research anything. Um, because I just feel like they're just going to tell me what they want me to know. Like they're, they're dictating what I, what I get to see and what I get to know then all the truth and all the balance and and it, it's just I don't want the media to affect yeah. my day-to-day -day, and I totally get that yeah. um, and it's funny because they say the news is it's typically more negative than it is ever positive we don't typically see a lot of really good news um, stories <laughs> right um, and they play it first thing in the morning at lunch and right before we go to bed. So while we're eating our breakfast, having our lunch, which is gonna affect our digestive systems. And before we go to bed, it's gonna affect our sleep. So it's already in prime times of, of our, of to, like being able to have that perfect health life. Right. Um, yeah. I <laughs> and agree. Good on you because I'm I'm actually having this thought I'm like yeah I, I really need to challenge myself to plug my phone in an hour before I go to bed but you're plugging it in at nine I'm like wow that's remarkable <laughs> to be honest it's not like that every night but I'm really making an effort and sometimes my daughter will say didn't you read the text I'm like no my phone is on the other side of the room it's yeah not, I don't sleep with it it's I, look it's hard it's it's hard sometimes Sometimes I'm like, oh, just goodbye, go, get away from me. Because yeah. um, we do so much online and everything. And you know what? I love the People magazine, okay? Lately, everything that shows up on their website, it's all negative. So I've kind of like, I can't even look at the People magazine. <laughs> like, seriously, you've gone all negative. And what I liked during COVID was, who was it? The actor, Blunt, um, John, no, John Krasinski, Krasinski, he started something called Good News. Okay. And it was only good news. And I'm not saying be ignorant of what's going on because I know perfectly well what's going on, but I choose to control how much I want to come into my brain 
And right. if there's things I don't know about and it's brought up to my attention, I'll go research it and I'll go look at it. But yeah. the constant negativity, no wonder mental health is bad enough as it is in this past year with what's going on with COVID. But do we have to hear it 24 seven? It's not healthy. It's just, and when you're in a bad way, it affects, like you said, digestion, your sleep, everything. And mm -hmm. all that good work you're doing. I don't like one of, it's called a news diet. Dean Graziosi, he's, he's one of these. Yeah, I know. Right. You know, I love Dean. Yeah. Talks about going on a news diet and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Look, it, be aware of what's going on but i don't need to know what's going on 24 7 sorry i just yeah <laughs> not, not when i know what it does to me not when i know how it affects me the other night my husband was watching the news about india and i actually dreamt that night about india and i said to him i'm sorry no i can't so we have a number on the tv it has to be at the sleep time <laughs> number for me and i put my earplugs in and i can go to sleep but yeah. Or, I watch, or I watch Big Bang Theory is my thing to watch before bed because it's lighthearted, it's funny, and that's yeah. what I want to go off to sleep to. I don't want to go off to sleep to. If you look at all the shows on TV, right, Law and Order, I mean, a lot of good shows, the good shows, 911, even the medical shows that I love, I said to my husband, I don't know if I can watch these anymore. This one's dying, that one's dying. And he said, well, it is a hospital drama. I'm like, I know, but it's just so much, so much is like, okay, you know, just breathe. So, so I, and it's so true. It really, truly impacts your subconscious with whether you want to or not. You said you were dreaming about India because you heard it before you went to bed. And I got into Grey's Anatomy for quite, quite some time. And I was binging it with my daughter and a couple of friends. And I would literally go to sleep and, and those characters would be in my dreams. And it would, I'd wake up and I'm like, did that happen? Did that really happen? Yeah. <laughs> like it's so, it messes with you without yeah. even really realizing the impact. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the inflammation component because um, you said that you really truly wrestled with anxiety and it was a 20 out of 10. And once you started making better choices and bringing that inflammation down, I've also learned that that inflammation that happens within our brain, it sabotages that part of our brain that creates the serotonin, which is our happy hormone that helps us actually have the joy in our lives. And so that we're not constantly in worry and fret. And if our bodies are inflamed, it doesn't operate properly. Yeah. So if we are walking around, which I think the majority of Americans are, um, the world should I like unless I, I would I would have to say that the majority of us are walking around with inflammation of some sort in our bodies um especially with sugar being as highly addictive they say that sugar is more addictive than cocaine yeah. and if people need the support and the a the the clinics and the rehab and all the resources that they provide for a cocaine addict we need that support and that those resources and that and that encouragement and help to guide us to get off of our sugar addictions because it's in everything our sauces our um cereals like it's crazy we, i actually had um an uh ad pop up in my feed the other day of like a protein cereal that's got two grams of sugar and like 11 grams of protein and it's similar in like your fruit loops or frosted flakes or those those sugar those sugary type cereals that our kids all love which my my kids always growing up they're like can we have this nope nope i'm like i'll buy it for you when we're on vacation because i am not dealing with a sugar high child like i'm not sending you to school on that for breakfast because your teachers will not like me <laughs> right because I know that that much sugar in our bodies and I'm, and I'm not perfect in this area by all means. Um, and you shouldn't be. And I think that's another thing. Sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, please. I'll give you, when my kids were young, their first year, I never let them have anything sugary. And then as I got older, even when they turned one, I was the mother who said, no, they can't have cake for their birthday. And now I look back and think seriously, Michaela, you said that. And <laughs> Now, then they got older and they used to be the kids that would stand at the birthday party shoveling in the chips and the chocolate and all the junk. And I'm like, and I said one day, okay, that's not a good sign. So I would buy them stuff, you know, not too, too bad, but I'd buy stuff and buy them chips and buy them some chocolate. They would have a little drawer. And once they knew they could have it, they never 
binged on it. So again, it's learning the, the key to moderation. So if you deprive, you can actually go the other way. And I think kids part of, see food is such an incredible, food is, food is something that brings us together. It's not just, I don't believe it's just to eat, to sustain ourselves. For me, I have so many amazing memories of food. When I travel with my husband, when I travel with my family. Um, remember we ate this meal here and we remember we ate that there. Um, so food is so important for bringing people together, for creating memories, for cooking together. Like it's so many wonderful things. My very first brownie badge when I was a brownie growing up was my cooking chocolate butterfly cakes. And I remember that to this day, how I made chocolate butterfly cakes and got my badge. So food has been, had a huge association for me. When my dad was sick, the last thing he ate, he had just come from Paris and we found out he was sick in Montreal. He was visiting my sister. He was obsessed with this blue cheese and pear tart that he'd eaten and the tumor made him obsessed with things, but it was all always about the food with my dad and the memories were always about the food and, and my kids and I like that. But it's the what you choose and allowing yourself to indulge not all the time because I think all the time is a bad thing that our bodies don't need especially as we get older mm -hmm. but it's being aware being aware I think being aware of what you're putting in your mind being aware of what you're putting on your skin being aware of what you're putting in your body and knowing that sometimes it's okay eat that piece of cake life is too short have it but don't yeah. eat it every single day right and I, I read part of your story on your website about how your mom and grandma would be like huge entertainers and how they would always be in the kitchen cooking up a storm and having all these people coming over and just being a blessing. That was such a powerful story because one of the things that we've learned even within the Daniel Plan study that we're doing in my soul studies on Saturdays is um, how to create an experience around food so not to make it so that it's like oh no you can't have that no you can't have that we can have healthy nutritious meals in front of us and we can make it an experience one of the things that he um dr hyman actually mentioned was he goes yeah i don't start cooking until my company shows up and then i sit down and i make them chop up this or chop up that and he gets them involved and he's got wine and he's playing music and he makes it an experience so that's that culture that you're creating that memory. And that's something that I read with in your story is that culture, that memory that really ingrained your love for food and love for entertaining. So and I still have it. It's just even the recipes I cook now, I've changed. Now, if it's too healthy, one of one of my sons will say, Is that one of those healthy recipes for your Facebook group? <laughs> Like, no, just try it. Oh, just try it. What's in it? Try it. The majority of the recipes that they also, oh, that's really good. And it's just a healthier alternative to something they've already eaten before. Or yeah. maybe it's a little too healthy or a little too green, but it is the experience. And I don't want them growing up. I grew up with um, forbidden foods. So we were allowed sweets once a week on a Friday. And my grandfather had a huge sweet tooth and my mother had a huge sweet tooth. One of my boys has a massive sweet tooth and we were deprived except for them. And that that's when we would eat, 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 eat. Um, so now I just try to make it part of life, you know, like, yeah, have every Friday night, I make a nice dinner. I always make a dessert. Sometimes it's a healthier one. Sometimes it's not so healthy. Um, but during the week, I don't make dessert. I make healthy meals and everyone eats well. And, and my daughter works out and she exercises and she eats well. And now she's learning the balance between going out. And she should, as, as a 23-year-old, go out on the weekend, have a nice meal, blah, blah, blah. And then on the weekdays, just watch what you eat and eat healthy. And she does. And I think the balance is so, so hard. But once you start and, and especially for, for someone like you and me who've had anxiety and we understand the connection between food and anxiety, it's much easier to know that, you know, sitting down and eating every single night, uh, you know, chocolate. Now I eat dark chocolate. I hated dark chocolate. I was a, a milk chocolate woman through and through. Now I eat 90% dark chocolate and I love it, but I can only eat one piece at a time, maybe two. And you know what? It's enough. Now for people who are listening going, oh yeah, right. I'm like, Seriously, I was a milk chocolate lint person. I was a Cab Australian Cadbury fruit and nut through and through. 
love it and I will eat it again, but I won't eat as much. And that's the key, right? And the dark chocolate satisfies me. It, it's much healthier for me. And I try not to have it at night. I'll have it maybe during the day um, when I feel like it. And do you know what? Since I've started eating like this, I don't obsess like I used to. The more you obsess, the harder it is to lose weight and you make yourself crazy. I eat when I'm hungry. I'm learning what works for me. I'm learning what foods don't work for me. I'm learning what my triggers are. I'm learning how I feel. And if I want, like today, to be honest, at lunch, I had a tiny piece of that birthday cake from last night because I really, really enjoyed it. And I really wanted it. Did I have a big chunk? No, I had a little piece. And then straight away after my tummy goes, Poop, and I'm like, that's why I don't eat that all the time. I enjoy it. That was enough. Do you know what I mean? So it's finding what works for you, finding healthier alternatives and understanding um, life is short, as I know. So have that wine, have that this, but you don't need it every single day because, that's right. and, and that's the balance and, and, yeah. yeah. And anybody wanting to try to ch switch their milk chocolate for dark chocolate, you can start with 70% and yeah. throw some nut butter on there just to make it creamy and a little bit more palatable until your, to your taste buds get used to that. 90 is so much creamier than 85. I don't Are like it. I know my sister said to me, go 90. I'm like, no, I'm at 75. So I got to <laughs> 80, 85, go 90. I'm like, no, I'm at 85. Then I hit 90. I'm like, oh my goodness. It's creamy. It's not bitter. Oh, I'm going to have to give that a go because I honestly haven't it's, really left the 70s zone because I'm like, amazing. Oh, yeah, no, try it. It's not butter on mine. <laughs> try it. It's, it's really good. So I really good. like it. So, awesome. so Michaela, can you tell us a little bit more about the healthy skin products that you use and what that, how that has affected um, your health journey? Because I'm curious, it's good to know what we're putting in our mouths, but what are we putting on our skins? I know you alluded to a little bit of the toxins that they ban in Europe. Europe has such high standards. I wish the whole world would grasp their standards. Um, I think that's why my daughter truly wants to move to Europe. It's in her blood. Um, <laughs> Um, um, if you've ever seen a movie called Toxic Beauty, it's yes. you, right. So you'll never put anything on your body that's full of toxins again. It's it's very scary what's out there and the effect it has on our bodies. Look, years ago, it was the whole parabens. Oh, we don't have parabens. We haven't from day one. We, we don't test on animals. We don't use animal byproducts. Just because something says cruelty-free doesn't mean they don't have animal byproducts in them. Mm -hmm. Just because something's natural doesn't make it good for you. Um, animal byproducts and mineral oil. I used to think mineral oil was fabulous because it's minerals and oil, but it's actually a byproduct of petroleum and it's, it's like saran wrap for your skin. So nothing, it suffocates your skin. So nothing good can penetrate and your toxins at night, your, your skin's meant to detoxify, nothing can come out. So you can have a, a like I know Chanel has, um, I don't know if they still do, maybe they've changed, but they had you know, amazing cream with fantastic ingredients and then mineral oil. So it's almost like, well, why are you using all these fantastic ingredients? Nothing good can come in, nothing bad can come out. When I go to the hairdresser now, well, I haven't been in 10 months, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, I take my own shampoo because their shampoo makes my hair knotted. This shampoo um, that I use doesn't have any SLS. SLS is the, it's toxic. And it's it, the, the bigger the lather, that's the SLS in the in the shampoos. So all our shampoos are sulfite free. They don't have SLS in them. Um, um, like I said, no parabens and parabens. They find the found parabens in breast cancer cells, and our body does not produce parabens. So it comes from what we put on our bodies. So anything that ends in a ben um, is a paraben and it's toxic. Um, Alcohol is very um, very, very drying on your skin. We have a, so Arban has personal care and nutrition. So our nutrition is all plant-based. Um, and, and so we have uh, people trying to cut back on, let's say coffee. We have like a energy fizz stick. I have every morning that, and another thing for anxiety, we have a product, it's a de-stress powder and it's got, um, ashwagandha. I think that's how you pronounce it. Ashwagandha. Yeah, ashwagandha. Yeah. 
which is really good for stress, de-stressing. So I put a scoop of that. And, and I've heard it's good for your libido. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm pretty good at that department. That's one thing menopause has not really touched, thank goodness. But I have heard horror stories. Um, so the I put a scoop of that and, a, and the fizz stick in every morning. And if you take it consistently, I've noticed a huge difference because the fizz stick has um, natural caffeine from the guarana tree. So you don't get that crash. Um, it's got vitamin Bs in them as well, which is super important for us as well as we age. Um, and between that and the de-stress powder, I take it every morning in a liter of water. I've noticed a huge difference. I just feel so much calmer. Um, we have a, my, so for my skincare, what I, okay, this is what I, if people are looking for skincare, a routine, um, first of all, the most, one of my favorite products is the neck cream. Cause I'm very afraid of having turkey neck because I think the two parts of your body that really show your age are your hands and your neck. So a lot of people look after their face, but they forget their neck and forget their hands. And when you go in the sun, um, the, those spots on your hands, which I have some, it's just because we forget to sunscreen our hands. So there's sun spots that turn into age spots. So always put sunscreen on your hands and always use a really good thick neck cream. And I've told that to my sister too, because if you now when you go out, if you look at people, look at their necks and hands and you'll see. <laughs> and how do you tell someone you need a neck cream? Like I know someone who needs a neck cream, but how do you say, you know, you could do with a neck cream, right? <laughs> so the neck and the decolletage, I think it's called. Um, yeah, so you really want to look after that. So we have a new, a new skincare line that has plant-based retinol, which is huge because retinol, um, when my sister was younger, she had bad acne and she used to use a retinol A cream, but it's mm -hmm. very, very drying your skin. It burns your skin and it dries it out and you can't go in the sun with it. And it's got, it's not great for you, but they did find that one of the byproducts of this was it helped your acne, but it also helped with the fine lines. So we've developed a plant-based retinol and it's got something called Bacuchiol in it. And it has the same wonderful effects of retinol, but without all the side effects. So this new line has it in. So I use that, an eye cream is super important, a day cream, a night cream, and an eye cream, if they're the only things you're gonna use and a cleanser, because you really need to clean your skin. Actually, it's more important in the morning because your dead skin cells fall off at night, which I had no idea. Um, so after the day, I always, I always clean my face every night with a cleanser um, that has the Pacucciol and it's lightweight and it's not heavy. And we don't, you don't need to slather your face in our products. That's what I like about them. Um, they just have a 90 day money back guarantee, which is, that's how much we stand by our products. It's huge. Okay. So clean your skin, keep it clean. Um, moisturize it keep it hydrated and you can do that by using a good quality cream and drinking at least two liters of water a day because that's going to hydrate your skin as well um and smoking i wouldn't smoke either apart from it not being good it's so bad for your skin and you can tell a smoker's skin it's kind of yellow and it, it it's really very dull looking mm -hmm. um so they're they're my favorites like the day-to-day -day stuff um, and then like for makeup, I use, um, like a, we've got a very nice lightweight concealer that I use and a bronzer. Like I don't put a ton of makeup on, but it's very lightweight. So you don't feel like you're wearing a lot and oh, take like your makeup off before you go to bed with the cleanser. So I have a, a face cloth that's called make off or something. Okay. Uh, and it's just like, it's like a magic face cloth. <laughs> I've also used the Norwex face cloths which work really well that all you need is water and it can take off your mascara and your okay. eyeliner or everything and just with water and I actually have used that for years um because I I don't I'm going to be honest I'm quite lazy when it comes to a face yeah, are, routine yeah. people are very <laughs> lazy but I've learned look you know what it doesn't take long we have six products in the anti-aging skincare line it doesn't take long in fact, I once did a video of the kettle will, it'll take longer for the kettle to boil than to use these six products. Oh, and it's true great. because you don't need a lot of time. It's just a new habit to form. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes true. I'm lazy, so I don't do every step, but I would never, never not go to bed without washing my face, putting on a, a night cream and a day cream and an eye cream. Like it takes, it doesn't take long. Um, it really, and it's just a new habit. So you just got to get mm -hmm. used to putting on a cream. Like it does really, but the benefits are huge because down the road you'll you'll see we've got this 
when I'm feeling sometimes, you know, when you hit menopause, your skin gets dry. And I noticed mine did. We have a product for hydration, but it changes the tone of my skin. Like I can tell now my skin, if I'm not, if I've neglected it a little bit, I can really tell the difference. Um, I can tell with food, if I'm eating something like, okay, where did that come from? Oh uh, yeah, I didn't, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know I've been, I had uh, um, a bit of a stint, la was it last week or the week before? And I had this like patch of, of a breakout on my back, on my, on my neck. I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah, that'll learn you, Stacey. <laughs> but that's good. Yeah. I mean, at least now you're aware, like I get allergies and sometimes I think part of it now is hormonal. I have been tested for absolutely everything. I'm allergic to soy, so I don't eat soy. I'm a, I've got, you know, seasonal allergies. Um, but I'm also, um, I, it's now down to menopause. So there are some times my feet itch. They just mm. itch. And then I know if my feet itch, I might get itchy here, might get itchy here. There's no rhyme or reason anymore. So if I'm really, really, really desperate, I do take an allergy pill that the dermatologist gave me. It's a little stronger than the others, but I try not to because I cleaned out my liver when I first started the menopause program and she shows, tells you how with, with drinking the water and, and, and the greens and, and blah, 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 whatever. So I, and I cleaned it out and, and you know, when it's clean, when you start sleeping well, when you start losing the weight. So I don't really want to pack up, pack it through. And I, so I try now really not to take an Advil unless I really need to, I will, but I, and I'm fortunate, thank goodness. I don't take any other medication except for the vitamins. So I will take an allergy pill if it's just you know, I can't stand it. Like yesterday I said to my sister, I don't know, should I be taking the pill? Or should I not be taking the pill? <laughs> take the pill? <laughs> and then it stopped. And I was like, yeah, I'm glad I took the pill because. Yeah, you know, otherwise you're doing that all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like a monkey. Making me edgy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's great. And so you said you have a new, new, rewind the nutritional and the beauty products. So you do have some makeup items that are helpful because I was curious about that because I didn't actually dig too terribly deep in the beauty side. Um, I'm very intrigued in trying the fizz sticks because it's got green tea in it, I think, so that even for that afternoon crash, you, you don't need an afternoon coffee. Like I've been very, very, uh, it's, I am a coffee drinker okay. and I used to drink coffee from the moment my eyes opened to right before wow. bed um, until I got really sick and then I had to get rid of it. Yeah. And then when I got feeling better, I started dabbling and now I, I, I max myself out at two cups a day. So first thing in the morning and then I'm good, but there's some afternoons where I just hit a wall and I literally have to go and take a 20 minute power snooze because I just can't function otherwise. But so I would love to be able to give your fist sticks a try because they absolutely they have guarana. It's so it, it does have caffeine, but it's natural caffeine from the guarana tree. So it's a it's not acidic like coffee, and b it won't give you that crash like an like a Red Bull will or one of those super sugary drinks will give you. I drink a ton of green tea. That's my new thing. Is I drink, I, I've got it sitting here. I had started half my pot, so I try to drink my one water my leader with my fizz stick and my the de-stress powder in the morning like up until I give myself till like one o'clock I'm like finish it in the afternoon then I refill that bottle and I drink probably half of it and then I have a another bottle full but it's it's green tea I've started with the green tea so because I'm a big tea drinker and they tell you don't drink caffeine in the afternoon and I was one of these people you know what and I could drink tea before I would go to bed and I could still sleep I haven't tried it lately, so I'm not going to, because when I started this program, I, I was following what she said, and she said, don't drink caffeine after this. I have drunk tea at two in the afternoon, and I've still been fine. But generally, as a rule, I drink my tea in the morning, and I drink green tea, and it's not a decaf green tea, it's just, and it's fine. Uh, but the fizz sticks, they come in different flavors, and they have vitamin B in them. They have CoQ10 in them. So CoQ10 is um, something I learned from this program is it helps with the blood vessels um, mm -hmm. that we need as we age because it helps them not constrict. So I was actually taking a CoQ10 supplement, but it was too much for me and I could I was getting heart palpitations. I'm like, nah, I can't be taking this. So I take the fizz stick because it's got CoQ10 in it, but it's only 50 milligrams. So it's a small amount and, it's, and it does the trick. I'm fine with it. And the fizz sticks come in different flavors and it's got... 
it's got ginseng and vitamin Bs and diff- we have a couple of flavors. Love them. And it does, it doesn't affect me like wired. It just makes me not tired. You know, I don't mm-hmm. feel like I need to have that nap in the afternoon. So yeah. yeah, absolutely. They're great. And we have makeup, the mascara. I personally think we have the best mascara in the market. It's fabulous. I love it. Um, and we do not just that we do for men. We have a men's line, women, baby acne line. We have an amazing spa line. We have hand soaps and creams and masks, beautiful masks for your face. Um, we have a sheet mask that is like hydrating like crazy. It's fabulous. You mm. look like, um, what's the guy? Hannibal Lecter. You know, you put it on your face. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to face live, but <laughs> if you could believe it. Anyway. <laughs> It's, it's a really good product. So, um, yeah, and, and you know what? It's just knowing that what I'm eating and what I'm using and what I'm feeding my mind, it, it's just all nice, good, healthy, positive vibes because we live in such a weird time right now that um, it, it is hard not to get caught up in it. Um, and sometimes there were some friends I just couldn't speak because everything was negative, negative, negative. And I'm like, I, I, I can't go there right now. So I would just stretch the time that I would speak to them um and like I said I like to sit sometimes and read trashy novels and watch trashy movies and you know what I feel good and there are other times I'm reading the news and I'm reading good things and I'm watching documentaries and that's a thing it depends what I need and when I need it but for the most part I feed my mind well I feed my body well and I feed my skin well as well. And I think all around, I I feel so, so much better. I mean, then I did, I started this program last June and I look at, wow, what I've done in a year with my body and how I feel and my anxiety. That was scary when you've never had anxiety and suddenly you, you have it. It's, it's horrible. And it gives you a little peak of so much mental illness and you can get a tiny grasp of what people go through and how horrible it is. And it, it's a scary thing when you're so consumed and overwhelmed and, and, and it came out of nowhere. And I'm like, what yeah. the hell is this? You know? So I'm really happy that I've been, I'm able to control it and it's worked for me that way. I'm not saying it works for everybody in the same way, but for me, it, and I know food is so powerful, as we've said in, in so many ways for so many people, for so many different things. Mm-hmm. And Yeah. Food is medicine, right? Food is medicine. <laughs> and as long as we're eating, like not the processed foods, not the sugar foods, those kinds of things, we really truly need to be as natural and as organic as we possibly can. I know for a lot of people, organic is far reaching for their pocketbook, but um, farmers markets are now uh, like wide open because we're in the season for it. Um, I'm not sure if farmers markets are an all year long thing for where you're from. No. Um, but now is a great time to be able to go and not only support the local community, yeah. which is super important, but it's also like you're getting more natural, more organic um, type foods and things for your home. Um, our barn doesn't do any like household cleaning no. items, correct? Right. So it's just it's what, personal skin care and nutrition. Okay, and perfect. I will, I'm very happy to offer any of your friends and your clients. off if they would like to order anything from our bunch of just because I believe in these products so much and I believe how important it is on what we use and I've seen the results so I'm happy to you know offer that for all your clients. Oh that's very generous Michaela so how would they go about getting or taking advantage of that 20% discount how would they get email me um you have my email it's 432 triple at gmail.com and then I can send the website and we can go from there and um yeah I I mean look part of my job is to educate people on safer healthier alternatives to products people are using anyway it's Mm -hmm. not like I'm asking you know when I share with people um I can honestly say it works because I use it myself and I'm the product of the product you know yeah that's that's I think yes yeah, and that's the best way of finding. I mean, that's how I buy things. Did it work for you? Is it good? Do you know a plumber? Is he good, right? And, and I, it's word of mouth. That's what we do. That's so true. It's so true. So I I do have your website because you did share that with me. 
So when they go through that process and they put stuff in their shopping cart, would that 20% be available at the end or do they have to let you know what's in their shopping cart and then? Good question. It depends on the amount they're ordering. It might show up for some depending on the, the order and it might not for others. So for those who don't, I'm happy to give it to them anyway. So that's why it just might be easier to say, you know, I can check out the website, have a look. And then maybe contact me and say, you know, I'm looking at this, this, and this, and I can just help them out and make sure that they get it. Awesome. Well, thank you, Michaela. That is so generous. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely going to be giving a couple things um, a, get, a go. The fist sticks look amazing. There is lots of different flavors. So like, what would be your favorite, favorite? Which Pomegranate. one? Pomegranate. Pomegranate. Nice. Pomegranate. And I think the lemon lime, is that one new? Because I think that... Oh, so you get more... Are you, are you in the States, Stacey? Oh, yeah. I'm in no, Canada. in Canada. So in Canada, um, I'm not sure if it's still available. It might be, or maybe it is new. I'm not more a lemon lime. I'm more, uh, the, I don't know. I, I only order the pomegranate because I love it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. You'd have to have a look if it's on the website. It's all good. They're all good. But my yeah. favorite is the pomegranate. Nice. And you use... Uh, the de-stress powder is that what you called it is yes it, it? it's an adaptogenic de-stress powder I think it's called it's in a little blue tin and it would probably be under in the nutrition section okay uh, I I use a scoop a day and with my water and I mix it with the fizz uh, sometimes I we have a tea bag I mix the tea bag with the fizz and make it hot and that's also delicious and the tea bag is it's like a detox tea so it's got lots of good things it's really good for your liver the tea yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I can, I have recipes for protein shakes, and all kinds of things. So yeah, if you are following Michaela on Facebook, I would highly recommend you go and look her up. She does these live cooking shows, which are fabulous. Recently, she did a banana strawberry ice cream. Banana oh, that was last week. Did you not, did you, you have to try that recipe. So it's Koo's Kitchen on Facebook. It's actually not my name. It's Koo's Kitchen. You have to try that recipe. It was phenomenal. And you have to eat it straight away though, because I ate it the next day and the day after that, but it doesn't have the same soft consistency, right? Like the soft but ice cream. Phenomenal. I'll be making that one this summer for sure. <laughs> I wonder, you could probably even turn that into a popsicle. Like you throw it in a popsicle mold Good. and uh, you'd have like a creamy, like fudgical type popsicle. Yeah. Yeah, right? I guess you could. I, I just ate it when I ate it fresh like that. I was like, oh my God, it was phenomenal. Because I love it. Stuff. Was so simple. Yeah. So simple. Like this so different. Simple. <laughs> Two ingredients when you're done. Yeah. But then that's the other part to cooking, right? Is I cook to make it's got to be simple. If it's too many steps, I don't have the time. And who has the time? Right, exactly. <laughs> or uh, yeah, exactly. I totally agree with you. Well, thank you, Michaela. I very much appreciate you enlightening us with mm -hmm. all of your knowledge and expertise and experience and sharing your story and how you've come to this place of um, navigating menopause and finding <laughs> your health and your purpose. I can tell that you have really truly stepped into your calling because when you talk about these things and how they've changed and transformed your own life, you light up like a Christmas tree. Oh, so it's you. fabulous to be able to see that excitement and energy come from you for sure. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. It's It's been a lot of fun and it was a great connection that we made on LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn has been a fabulous tool for me to, to with all of the, these professionals. And I'm really, really excited to see more and more yeah. of it coming through the pipe. So thank you very much for your time thank today. Thank you. Yeah. My Have a good one. Thanks. <laughs>